your colleagues from both sides of the aisle have mentioned how it's a highly partisan time right now. So what are we working on to unify the country? So I think that the ability to work across the aisle really begins with each individual member. Uh, in my circumstance, before I came to Congress, I was Florida Secretary of State. And in that role, I worked every day with local election officials across Florida. And they come from all different kind of communities, big cities, small towns, and of course, across the political spectrum. Uh, some were Republicans, some were Democrats, some were independents. And what it really showed me was how much we can accomplish when we have shared objectives. So in our case, we were very concerned about election security, election integrity, and that was true regardless of political background or personal political views. And we had such a strong alliance and we're really able to deliver results for Florida. And so I bring that same perspective to Congress. There are certain things that very clearly aren't going to be just Republican issues or Democrat issues, they're American issues. And wherever we can, uh, we should be working together to accomplish those objectives. It, it benefits all of our constituents and, and really the country uh, when we can find ways to work together. Absolutely. And before we dive into those American issues that you can find yourself working across the aisle on, I do want to take a step back to the beginning here. Your father's a retired two-star general in the United States Air Force, so you grew up in a military family. Is that what drew you to politics? So I did. I grew up in an Air Force family and moved all over the country as a child. I came to Florida for school. I went to the University of Florida for undergraduate and law school and then stayed. Florida was home to me ever since. And so certainly in my family, in my house, there was a commitment to service, to service to our community, to our country. Uh, my father's a retired two-star. My mother was a public school teacher. So in both cases, they really did devote their lives to public service. And much of my career in law was also in the public sector. I, I was a federal uh, public defender, federal prosecutor, later a judge, uh, and have always been drawn to uh, serving the community, serving the public, serving our country uh, in the place that is right, uh, given the professional opportunities uh, and experience that I bring to bear. And then most recently, before you were elected to Congress, you served in Governor Ron DeSantis' administration as the Secretary of State. Can you describe that experience for us? Being Secretary of State and being part of Governor DeSantis's administration was really just an extraordinary professional opportunity. So the Secretary of State position itself uh, is just an incredibly diverse role. Uh, the Secretary of State in Florida works on everything from elections as the state's chief elections official to serving as the state's chief cultural officer, chief protocol officer. Uh, we have the Division of Historical Resources. So there's an incredibly diverse set of things that the Secretary of State is responsible responsible for overseeing in Florida. So I thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting to work in each of those different sectors of the responsibility. And of course, being part of the DeSantis administration was also uh, an incredible uh, experience for me. Uh, he has been such a successful and important leader for our state on so many policy issues. And so having the opportunity to really serve from the beginning of his administration and to be part of some of those really important things that we did for Florida, everything from helping our economy continue to th uh, grow and thrive to uh, being sure that we were investing in our schools and in our school children and in parents. Uh, you know, these are things, community safety, uh, things that are key priorities of mine. Uh, and we were able to have some real success stories at the state level. It sounds like what you're saying from your praise of Governor DeSantis, your ideologies really align. Before we get into your experience in the 118th Congress, I do want to talk about Governor DeSantis for one moment. He's widely seen as a probable and top contender of the 2024 GOP presidential nomination race, even though he didn't announce. If he does announce, do you support him for president? Well, here's what I'll say. Uh, Governor DeSantis is an incredibly talented leader. Uh, and whether he chooses to stay as our governor or whether he chooses to run for president, uh, I am very confident uh, that he will serve our country, our state uh, with, in with incredible integrity uh, and, and skill, regardless of where uh, he decides to, to devote his next steps. Uh, and I look very much forward to seeing what he achieves.
Well, now let's fast forward to the 118th Congress where you are a freshman member. It's been about two months, but let's take it from the beginning about two months ago. It started off on what many describe as a chaotic moment for the GOP when the House Speaker vote took about 15 rounds, which many said that seemed like a fractured moment for the GOP. You're sitting here now two months later. How would you describe the current state of the Republican Party? See, I would say the opposite. I think what we saw at the beginning of this Congress was a remarkable opportunity for all of the Republicans in the conference, no matter where they came from, no matter how distinct their districts might be within the Republican conference. It was an opportunity for us all to be heard and for us all to work together to get to the right answer and to get to the right solution. And that's what happened. So it was uh, certainly a historic way for us to begin, uh, but we absolutely got to the the right outcome. And I think what we demonstrated is that we do have the ability to come together and to work together. So my belief is that that's going to be the first of many such opportunities for us to build coalitions across the Republican conference. On that note of working together, as you know, it is a divided government right now. Democrats have control of the Senate and Republicans have control of the House. So on that note, what do you think a divided Congress can achieve? Oh, I think there's a lot that we can achieve. And, and we really started quite from, from the beginning in looking at things that are uh, that are important across the aisle. You know, everything from looking at our Strategic Petroleum Reserve to the Special Com Committee on China. You know, there are important things we can be doing about which Republicans and Democrats can often agree. Uh, another very important role we have that we've started, you know, right from the outset have been uh, engaged in quite a bit of oversight. And there are important important questions out there. Uh, you know, I have the privilege of serving on uh, three committees, uh, Judiciary, Homeland Security, and House Administration. Uh, and in each of those committees, we've also been engaging in important oversight of government agencies uh, and the issues that are facing our country. So, so there is a lot. One of our commitments to America as Republicans was a government that's transparent and accountable. And one thing that we're working on every single week is making sure that we're getting the American people the information and the answers that they want, uh, and that the government is accountable for the choices that it's making. Can you specifically dive a little deeper on there? How exactly is the Republican Party being transparent and accountable? Sure. So, you know, you can really go committee by committee and see what it is that we're looking at. You know, I know that one thing that was very important in, in my community, in my district, uh, is the concept of community safety. And I think that presents itself in a number of different ways. Uh, you know, again, as a former prosecutor and judge, it's, it's, it's an area that I know a lot about uh, in, in my community. And I know that it's a real priority for our residents. And, and so in both the Judiciary Committee and in Homeland Security, we've been focused on the concept of border security. Just this last week, the Homeland Security Committee did a field hearing uh, down on the southern border, and we heard from local sheriffs, ranchers, landowners, the people who are actually living every day the experience of what it is when our border is not secure. And, you know, their stories are so important because this isn't just a question of policy on a page or a statistic. These are real people whose lives are being affected and irreparably changed uh, because of a lack of a secure southern border. So, you know, that's just one example of the type of thing that we have an incredible opportunity to do in Congress. So, you know, I think Think that you know anyone who was down there had the had the Democrats on our committee come with us they would have seen the same thing and heard the same testimony uh, and and you simply cannot uh, avoid the conclusion that this is an absolute travesty uh, what's happening down there it's not just people they're drugs human trafficking uh, that's very dangerous and very destructive to our country that's flowing across that border every day so that's one of the things that I am very committed to working on in this Congress uh, is doing everything that we can to be sure that we're keeping that border secure 